Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I have prepared interesting problem for you. It is easy but probably not many of you would be able to solve it. So here's a problem. Jane is 20 years old woman whose 10 years old brother died of GPG disease, a fatal autosomal recessive disease of childhood that has a frequency of 1 in 40,000 in all populations. Her husband Dick is unrelated. What is the probability that their first child will be affected with GPG disease? As usual, I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve this problem on your oven first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So let's start with uh, drawing a pedigree of uh, Jane family. So Jane has mother and father. Jane had a brother who had a disease and he died and he is a Jane. And because this is autosomal recessive genetic disorder, let's say that it is caused by recessive allele A. So genotype of your brother was small a, small a. And that also means that because of her mother and father are phenotypically normal, they have to be carriers. So they have to be genotype capital A small a and capital A small a. And um, Jane is married and here is her husband Dick. And now we have to find what is the probability if they would have a child that he also would uh, have this genetic disorder. So we designate this child uh, with this sign because we don't know the sex of their future child and this genetic disorder is not sex related. It is autosomal genetic disorder, autosomal recessive. So now uh, what we need to do in order to solve this problem, we have to find uh, probability of Jane to be heterozygous. So to be capital A and small a. And what is the probability? Take a look. Here is genotype of her father. Here is genotype of her mother. And if we build a simple Punnett square, we can find probability of Jane to be heterozygous. And this is not 50% because we know that she doesn't have this disease. So we know that she is not small a, small a. So we can exclude uh, this variant here. And now uh, the probability that Jane is heterozygous as you see would be 2 out of 3. So this is Jane's probability to be heterozygous, 2 out of 3. Now we have to find the probability that her husband Dirk uh, also heterozygous. So what is the probability for her husband to be heterozygous? According to our problem we know that occurrence of this genetic disorder is 1 out of 40,000 people. That means uh, we need Hardy-Weinberg formula here, which give us a following frequency of three genotypes in a population. So P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared and all this equals to 1. And for the P squared we have genotype which is homozygous dominant to PQ stands for the heterozygous genotype and Q squared stands for the homozygous recessive genotype. So as you see we only have here two alleles. Allele P which stands for the uh, dominant allele A and allele Q which stands for the recessive allele A. So just two alleles P and Q would produce three genotypes. And of course, as you know, that uh, 
uh, if we have only two alleles, which is allele P and Q, so these two alleles uh, make 100% or 1. Again, for the allele P in Hardy-Weinberg formula, uh, we have dominant allele, and for the allele Q, we have recessive allele A. Now, in order to find probability uh, that DIG uh, is heterozygous, we have to use this part of the formula. So, uh, but first we have to find P and Q for our calculations. If we know that Q squared is equal to A multiplied by A, so we can find a frequency of the Q or small a just taking square root of q squared. So again, uh, q would equal square root of q squared. That means, uh, again, q equal to square root of 1 over 40,000. So Q equal to 1 over 200. Now take a look. Uh, if we know the frequency of the allele Q, we instantly know the frequency of the allele P. So frequency of the allele P would be 199 over 200. And this is going to be frequency of the dominant allele P. So we have just two alleles here. Now we have both P and Q for our calculations. So frequency of the heterozygous genotype would be 2PQ. Again, in our formula, that means heterozygous genotype. And this equals to 2 multiplied by frequency Q, uh, which is, uh, sorry, frequency of P, which is uh, 199 over 200, and multiplied by the frequency of the little Q, which is 1 over 200. And uh, basically, this part of the formula uh, means 1. So we can say that this equals to 1. So what we have? We have 2 multiplied by 1 would be 2 and 2 over 200. That means 1 hundredths. So 1 hundredths. And uh, this is frequency, again, of the heterozygous genotype. So let's put this number here. Uh, 1 over 100. This is probability that Dick is heterozygous. So his genotype also going to be capital A and small a. Now two small steps left. So we have probability for Jane to be heterozygous. We have probability for her husband Dick to be heterozygous. And now let's multiply all these probabilities. So take a look. Uh, so probability for Jane to be heterozygous is two sorts. We have to multiply by probability of her husband Dick to be also heterozygous, which is 1 over 100. And we also have to multiply by the probability that uh, if both of them heterozygous, uh, what is the probability that the child would be small a, small a. And as you see, probability would be 1 quarter. So we have to multiply by this 
probability. One quarter. So what we have here? Two multiplied by one would be two multiplied by one would be two. So let's put this number on top. And three multiplied by one hundred is going to be uh, three hundred and multiplied by four would be uh, one thousand two hundred one thousand two hundred and now we can reduce these numbers by two and the answer is going to be one over six hundred and this is going to be our answer and as you see this is answer C and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.